we're going to do a very straightforward simplistic example of how to apply Young's modulus and the concept of Young's modulus to calculate the elongation of perhaps a aluminum wire uh, suspended maybe from the ceiling let's say the original length is four meters long and we suspend at the bottom of the wire a mass of 500 kilograms which is over a thousand pounds the wire has a diameter of one millimeter now that wire may not be able to hold that much weight it may break but we're going to leave that to the next video, the maximum stress we can put on a material to see before it breaks. But right now, let's assume it's not going to break, doubtful, but we don't care at this point. And we're just going to figure out the change in the length of this wire. Just as it is under compression, tension has the same, you have the same way of solving for that problem, whether or not the object is under compression or under tension, of course. Talking about a wire with a diameter of one millimeter, I don't think it can compress that very well. It just kind of bends. But stressing, putting it under tensile stress, that makes it a lot more sense. So the definition, again, we have stress divided by strain. And stress, of course, is force divided by cross-sectional area. And strain is equal to the change in the length divided by the original length. And we note that that's equal to Young's modulus. So taking that equation and writing it slightly differently, we can write force divided by area times, because instead of dividing by a fraction, we can multiply by its inverse, so times the original length divided by the change in the length equals Young's modulus. And since we're looking for the change in the length, I'm going to cross multiply, bring the y over here, bring the delta L over there. So force divided by area times L sub naught divided by Young's modulus equals the change in the length. So reversing the equation, turning it around, we can write delta L is equal to F over A times initial length divided by Young's modulus. And now let's go ahead and plug in the values. What is the force? Well, it turns out if you hang a mass from a, a wire like that, the force of gravity will be M times G. So we have to have M times G for the force. So that would be a mass of 500 kilograms times a G of 9.8 meters per second squared. The original length was given to us as 4 meters. Divide the whole thing by the cross-sectional area. Now it looks like it's a, it's, it's a wire, it's a, has got a, um, a round cross-sectional area, circle cross-sectional area, so that would be, the area would be pi r squared. So pi times half the radius, or the radius is half the diameter, one half d, which is equal to 0 0.0005 meters. Notice that a millimeter is 0 0.001 meter, but half of that is 0 0.005 meters. So 0 0.0005 meters. We have to square that. That's pi r squared for the cross-sectional area. Young's modulus, it being aluminum, it's 7 times 10 to the 10th, 7 times 10 to the 10th newtons per square meter. All right, that will give us a change in length in terms of meters. Let's find out what it is. So at 500 times 9.8 times 4 divided by pi divided by 0 0.0005 squared and times ooh, 1 divided by 7 e to the 10th equals. And wow, let's see here. That is equal to 0 0.357 meters. Wow, that would be 35.7 centimeters, which is approximately, uh, wow, 14 inches. That's an elongation of 14 inches. I don't think that wire would uh, stay together. Four meters, of course, is about 13 feet or so. You have a 13 foot long wire, one millimeter in diameter, put this much mass on it, it'll probably break, but we'll do that in the next video. What's good enough for us is, if it doesn't break, how long will it stretch? Well, simply put in the force, divided by cross-section area, pi r squared. Put in the original length, divided by Young's modulus, we get from the table. Crank the calculator, 35.7 centimeters, about that much. So, yeah, you do have to take that into account in certain circumstances. It's a good example.